Argentina into Chile. And that meant increased support for Chileco Lopez on the three bike. On the first day in the Chilean desert, Chileco finished second on his Aprilia after De Pre got a penalty and was knocked down to the ninth. Everyone benefited. Helder Rodriguez finished fourth. But biggest surprise on the Yamaha was Olivier Pa, third. He might have had good speed, but had already picked up a 10 minute penalty for speeding as well and therefore wasn't in overall contention. Cyril de Pret was the man who finished second on the road, but 10 minute penalty is really going to harm his chances later on in this rally. Malcoma, once more, took victory. This day was important, the first big desert stage of 200 kilometers, where it was really hard to open the track. I had a good feeling, I'm happy with the way it's gone, so now I will fight every day to the end. This evening I'm second by two seconds, for number two that's not bad. One big casualty of the trip to Chile was Robbie Gordon. He broke a wheel bearing and no teammates turned up to his aid. Crazy. Cell phone Sadly, he missed the entrance to the stage and therefore was disqualified from the rally. We put a lot of work into it as a, as a race team and an organization. Uh, not, not just me and my guys. Um, countless hours and and uh, and weekends and and effort that's just um, relentless put into uh, to come here. And just the first four days just was uh, was a disaster for us. Fighting back on stage four was Carlos Sainz taking victory once more in the Volkswagen over Nasser Alatia. Stefan Paderhansel stuffed with punctures. Born in 1966, Albert Bosch is married and has a career of managing investments, but he's also a big adventurer having completed the Dakar before, both in bikes and cars. I was always interested in adventures, to come back to the origins, because in the last editions of the Dakar, I was only thinking about big engines, more power, running faster, and I know I'll never win the Dakar, or at least I think I won't, but suddenly this option gave me a chance to achieve in a very special way, an adventure on my own, integrating things, I love the most. His adventuring doesn't stop there. He's completed the seven summits of the world, the highest in each continent. But how does that compare to the Dakar? For me, it's all about to live an adventure. The Dakar allows both big Carlos Sainz and a guy like me and even a first entrant to be together and to live the adventure, each one in his own way. We'll be following the progress of Albert Bosch, but he's having a pretty hard time in that McRae. At least it's not cold though. In the truck category, as you would expect, the 500 of the Camaz team is still victorious. Vladimir Chagin hasn't had his own way though, because Fyodor Kabarov, his big teammate, has been pushing him hard. And Alice Lopez is still there in the Tatra, the yellow machine, trying desperately to make it more than just a Camaz affair. And there's a Dutch entrant as well in the MAN team. Sound, that's sound. <laughs> stage five and Mark Comer set off in a big stage of dunes but soon he was eating dust clipping a rock in the middle of the road the bike went down he was dazed and couldn't find the bike for a moment the crash didn't cost him too much time but the repairs did eight minutes he lost and he had to push very hard for the rest of the 
Incredibly though, despite the issues with the bike, he still managed to beat his rival, Cyril Depret. Depret was riding very, very hard, but not hard enough. When he saw Como on the side of the road, he backed off. Yes, he passed him at the fuel station, but that wasn't enough. There was a little hole in the radiator, which I'm trying to fix because it's uh, still losing water. But it's not really that serious. Star of the day before, Olivier Pau was leading at kilometer 231, but he went down, broke his wrist, and is now out of the rally. Sadly, not flying was Frenchman David Castor. His Sherco decided to shed all its gears bar first, and he was red for four extra hours at 40 kilometers an hour. Victory then to the BMW Speedbrain team of Paolo Consalves. He rode with his teammate Franz Verhoeven for most. Verhoeven fell with two kilometers to go, handing the victory to the Portuguese man. It became a very historic day for the BMW mark as he went to Iquique. The cars started rather dramatically with the Mini Countryman beached in a ditch. It had been working very well, but caught in the dust, he didn't see the hole and found himself stuck. Co-driver Michel Perrin suffered a slight wrist injury as well. The reason this was, day was significant for BMW and indeed Monster was that Stefan Pederhansel finally took victory in his X3, making it BMW in both categories. For some, the stage to Iquique just carried on going into the night. It was torturous for some of the amateur competitors, the deep sand catching them out. Oh, you put of fish fish. <laughs> Dakar! 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 As the sun went down, many cars and trucks were still being towed out of the dunes. Here, Renato Richelieu de Mer gets his Iverco truck back on all four wheels. But night fell and many amateur competitors were still stuck in the fesh fesh till early morning. Once day broke, the bikes were back on course and the guys at the front flying once more through the desert. Ruben Farrier ran on his own for most of the day. He would be fastest. A 10 minute penalty at the end of the stage meant he didn't finish the day ahead. Instead it was Helder Rodriguez who took stage victory. After running fast early on he latched onto the front five ahead of him and there he stayed. His pace, fantastic. Second on the stage then was Cyril Desprez but problems on the Red Bull KTM and engine vibrations slowed his pace and he eventually waited for Ruben Farrier to catch up. But significantly, he did beat Mark Comer and take the gap slightly down to eight minutes overall. A new man to the top five was Slovakian Stefan Savitsko, an ex Intura rider. He was 13th in 2010, but this was very much his first time in the top five on this rally previous best result, 13th the day before. In the quads, Alejandro Patronelli leads by 40 minutes and absolutely flying with Argentinian rivals trailing behind. Coming into the rest day, the top 10 look like this. Coma leads by just 8 minutes and 40 seconds ahead of Depre. Lopez, 22 minutes down on the Aprilia, Rodriguez and Farrier. Then Villadoms in sixth, Jonas Street having a quiet time in seventh on the Yamaha. Franz Verhoeven eighth, Juan Pedrero ninth, and Svitko moves into the top ten. And in the cars once more, Carlos Sainz took victory, pushed very hard by Natalia. He suffered a puncture on the day, but was still fast enough through the dunes to take victory. It was a happy day for Volkswagen Nasseralatia finished second, just a few seconds behind. Okay. 
De Villiers would finish the day in third spot, some five minutes down, and Mark Miller resurgence to form, put him in fourth. That all meant that Pelle Hansen had had a very bad day. In fact, he picked up four punctures on the stage. He only had three spares. Therefore, wind in the tyres every few kilometres. And that cost him 14 minutes. He's well down now. Halfway through the rally, and this is what the car category looks like. Sights ahead of Alatia by just two and a half minutes. Pelle Hansel 14 down, De Villiers 31 down. Holovitz in fifth spot, an hour and 15 behind. Then it's Miller, Terranova, Spinelli, Shishiri, and Lavier in the Nissan Asuja 10th. In the truck category, it's all changed round. Chagin no longer leads after having two days of solid punctures. He was third on the final day. Second was his teammate Fearless Kabarov looking for his third Dakar victory. And that meant Alice Lopez was extremely happy and drinking plenty of his own energy drink with stage victory in the Tatra. Arika is the home of the rest day, but there's plenty of action still to come in week two.